global markets are trying to grapple with how much of a health crisis we're actually facing here. How quickly is it before this is declared a pandemic? Um, Any time soon, I think. Uh, uh, the We've heard people say, or oh, it might not become a pandemic. It's not necessarily going to become a pandemic. And that's true. And the World Health Organization won't declare a pandemic until they're confident that it really is one, until it ticks all the boxes. But, it, I mean, it could, it could be any day. In terms of the global response uh, for containment, we've just heard that the U.S. has come under some criticism in terms of how it's managed um, the, the, sp the spread of the virus. Is it possible to actually contain this in any meaningful way? Uh, I think not. I mean, you've seen the Chinese work very, very hard, be very um, strict in, in their control methods and their control procedures, but still it's got out. Uh, that may have been because the genie was out of the bottle, uh, to use a phrase, but before um, they started trying to control it. And we don't really know uh, how long this has been spreading. Uh, we've only known about it for, what, seven or eight weeks, so it may well have started to spread and uh, have been classified as something else before we really knew about it. Mm. Simon, can you just clarify for us what, if this was classified a pandemic, why would that be so much worse than endemic? What would it actually mean in terms of the impact on uh, the global economy? Well, probably not an awful lot. I mean, if it's endemic, it's everywhere. And if it's pandemic, it's everywhere. The difference between pandemic and endemic in terms of what it actually means to people's day-to-day -day lives is negligible, I think. OK, interesting. So where do you think the sort of touch points in terms of worse developments could come now? People uh, are fixating on new cases uh, coming up, the number of new cases, always looking for inflection rates in terms of cases uh, and the mortality rate as well. But is there anything that we might be missing in terms of the developments on a health level? No, I mean, if, it's, if it spreads, it will spread amongst the, the, the healthy population. They won't be particularly badly affected by this. They may have no symptoms. We're seeing that quite a lot, people getting the, the virus with no symptoms. We will see people with uh, what are cold and flu-like symptoms. Uh, they will be more likely to spread it on to people at risk, and it will be the people who are at risk with long-term health conditions that really are challenged by the infection, not the healthy population. What about the risk of reinfection of people who have already had coronavirus? Well, we're seeing that as well, and that, of course, has implications for vaccine development. But we also know that there are four endemic coronaviruses in the human population. Um, you and I have probably had some or all of those because they cause the common cold. And you get reinfected by those. There's no long-lasting immunity to any of those four, so you can get infected again and again and again by them, and people do. So it's quite possible that that's the case with this new coronavirus as well. How would you characterise uh, the reaction in terms of um, socially but also in global markets to uh, this coronavirus crisis, Simon? Are we overreacting? I have to say, I think a little. I mean, that's not to, to deny the importance of this infection, particularly amongst those that are at risk. But we have to remember that the vast majority of the population are not at risk of anything more than uh, cold or flu-like symptoms, which we get every year anyway. Um, this really does affect the people with long-term health conditions, long-term illnesses. Um, so. It's not a relatively large sector of the population that is at risk.